so I'm here to present uh, the projects we have for you all. Since this is completely online, um, we've decided to alter what we've done in previous years. In previous years, we've had participants be able to propose their own projects and we would try to help them kind of as best as we could so that they could work on things that interest them. Um, because this is entirely online, we won't necessarily be able to talk to you face to face, um, give you as much attention as we could. We've decided to try to uh, have different projects available that should hopefully appeal to you. Um, so we have 12 projects available. We have um, the instructors have looked at these projects. Um, a lot of us have actually proposed these projects and we think there are tasks, issues that are able to be done by people in the, um, by all of the participants in the project. Um, and we are also around to mentor and answer any questions. Um, we have Slack channels that have already been made for each group for initial coordination. coordination. Uh, everybody can um, jump into one of them, many of them. Some of you have already started signing up and joining Slack channels and asking questions. Uh, good for you. For the rest of you that haven't looked at the descriptions of the project so far, um, this is for you. And so after you've joined a group and, or maybe you're previewing a few groups in the beginning, uh, you can use the Slack channel to kind of get a sense of what's going on. The different mentors for each group will eventually kind of just settle on one choice for what they will use to kind of guide the group. Um, you don't have to use Zoom, you don't have to use Slack. Um, you can use Skype, you can use Discord, you can use whatever you want, but try to use the same thing as the rest of your group does so that you can get some progress done. Um, we'd like you to check in with your mentor and your group each day and practice. That means that you should talk to your lead mentor or one of the mentors um, and the rest of the group before the start of tutorials um, the next day, just so that we know that you're working on something or you're looking at something. If you need help, we can make sure that we can give you as much help as you need. Um, the help desks are not just available. Oh, and we're going to have a wide group update to everybody um, where everybody will just say um, what they're doing in one of the Slack project channels. Or I think we decided on the Slack general channel so that people can say, oh, I'm working on this or I'm working on that issue and we're making progress or not. Sorry, Joseph, um, you're not sharing the like the projection mode, we only see the, like the, uh, the Google slide page. Oh, huh. Well, can you see that? Maybe I'll just yes. do this. Okay. okay. Uh, so we have the group updates to everyone via Slack. Um, by the start of tutorials on Thursday, that means you can just drop a message in a Slack channel and everything will work. Um, just let us know what's going on and let other people know what's going on so they can see what cool thing it is that you're working on. Um, the help desks are available all week. The help desks aren't just available to ask questions about the tutorials, but if you have a question, say related to x-ray or plotting or some other specific thing that you're trying to do for your project um, and you don't know who to turn to, go ahead and go to the help desks and we'll be able to help you, try to help you. If you do want to work on your own project, um, you can. We can't guarantee that there will be a mentor available to help you um, or that we can really provide much assistance at all um, because we will be trying to keep this whole event running online. Uh, but certainly, if you really feel passionate about something, go ahead and work on your own idea. And you can come and check in with me um, every day of the week. Uh, just on the spreadsheet we have, uh, and I'll click through to it um, later, um, just 
put down your idea and put down your name so that we can keep track of what everybody is doing. Um, kind of aside, uh, since all of the projects should be on GitHub, try to use GitHub issues as much as possible um, to coordinate what work is being done. Use Slack to talk to people, but um, you'll probably get a lot farther if you can also use GitHub issues too. Um, and focus on your own growth. Um, don't burn yourself out. You know, a lot of us are also have jobs or you're working on um, papers or whatever. Don't feel like you have to burn 40 hours working on your project this week and 40 hours on the rest of your life and not sleep at all. We want you to be in one piece by the end of this. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna go straight into the projects. Um, our first one, um, Stace Beaulieu is, um, I'm sorry if I screwed up your name, um, but Stace is the mentor for this project, visualizing an visual boundary, looking at the shelf break front. Uh, the core part of it is we ha she has four CTD profilers lined up from north to south. Can we create a section plot um, with this data and generate a time series? So this little box over here is exactly what she wants to do, starting say with the CTD profilers and then maybe we can add in um, other data sources later, say AUVs or colliders or other sources that seem to run through the area. Um, and she's focusing on doing it in Python, but if there's anybody that's interested in doing it in R, they can certainly take a swing at it. Um, our next project is called PyXPCM, or Profile Classification Model. Um, and there's a package called PyXPCM. Um, so this project would also be in Python that uses profile classification model to do unsupervised machine learning on Argo profiles, at least in the paper that was generated. We were trying to get uh, the author of this package and the papers to help out with this. Um, he's a little busy right now. But I think we could still try to um, at least train some models using his code um, or even build convenience wrappers so that, you know, maybe you want to look at everything um, in different basins of the ocean um, from zero to a thousand meters or something like that. Um, then we can have a convenience wrapper that'll just make it very easy to quickly process all of this data. Um, and maybe we can make some pretty plots and do some science and point out some fronts or different areas of the ocean. Um, our next project is CTD GUI, um, a graphical user interface for CTD cast editing. Oh, I suppose I should mention that I'm the mentor for the previous project, project two. For project three, CTD GUI, um, Felipe, uh, myself, and Michael Kovach is, are the mentors for this project. There is a GUI data, GUI editor for inspecting and QCing CTD data. Um, there's a little screenshot of it over here where you can compare the CTD data trace to um, point samples, bottle samples of salinity, temperature, of any sort of arbitrary data say you could use this with chlorophyll or oxygen or any other sort of um, data you might get from a rosette or sensors that go up and down the length in the water. Um, so there's a tool that starts to do all this, but we'd like to expand that to add more plots, um, possibly be able to rearrange the display of plots, uh, load in arbitrary data, um, and make it more functional in general. Our next project, project four, is a glider data fetcher um, mentored by Felipe. And he says that um, inspired by ArgoPy, they can 
create a library that will leverage the ERDAP servers and make it easier to fly in Glider data. Um, so an example of the API is um, exactly the code we have here. Data frame equals glider, fet glider data fetcher, and then input whatever glider ID, and then that'll give you the data that you want. Or you could set a bounding box and look for all the glided data that shows up in this region. Um, project number five, uh, local spatial temporal interpolation of Argo data, um, Allison Gray, Drove Balwada and Spencer Jones. I apologize for anybody's names I've just massacred. Um, so we can build a Python tool to interpolate Argo data using Gaussian pr process regression methodology. So a more advanced version of traditional objective mapping. Um, there's a paper. Um, we have all of these floats in the water. And eventually, we can map them out and produce this plot of the world. Um, and so that is what we have for that one. Uh, project six, data hunters. Um, this is in collaboration with the ESIP marine data cluster. Um, so the mentors are myself, Carolina Barris, Chris Olson, and Matt Biddle. Um, tracking down information on a data set can be tricky. And, you know, maybe you want to find the latest version of a data set uh, because you have a copy of that data from two years ago and you want to know if any changes have been made to it so you can update your papers, update your results. Um, but you don't know where the latest version of the data is. So, what we'd like to do essentially is to build a tool that will allow us to search across multiple data centers, data repositories that hold data to f at least track down the metadata and say, oh, this data is a version 3.0 and I have version 2.5. I should update to the version of data that we found there. Um, and so some of these places use um, similar technology, um, ERDAP. Some of these places do not use ERDAP and the places that do not use ERDAP all generally have their own homegrown solutions. So, and they may not have an API to make metadata or data um, easily searchable. So we can start looking at some of these data centers that do so and figure out how to build an API, how to build a tool to look for metadata across all of these data centers. Um, and this is somewhat related to project 12, which we'll come to a little bit later. Um, project seven, marine heat waves. Shell Gentleman is the mentor for this project. I should also note that it is related to project nine. Um, we will be developing a marine heat wave analysis of AWS MER SST data. Um, so take the MWH code, adapt it to MER, um, and be able to change the parameters of what's going on with the data. I know a lot of you have already signed up for this project. So I'm sure Enshell has been very um, proactive in responding to requests. So you can all ask her in that Slack channel. Um, we have project eight species assemblages in marine protected areas and associated species distribution models. Um, Abby Benson and Nick Record are the mentors for this. And I should also mention that um, all of the mentors should be around after this so that you can ask them questions uh, be able to um, get some answers, kind of figure out if you're interested in one or two and eventually settle on a project later on. Abby Benson should be around after this um, to take any questions. Um, so I'm going to pull species occurrence data from the Opus database um, and then answer questions using the species distri distributions. Um, and they have ideas 
that they want to follow up on. But if you have a great idea you think you'd like to follow up on, then you can do that. And this project is primarily in R. Uh, project nine, cloud-based gap-free SST. Um, Shell, as mentioned before, is the mentor for this project in project seven. So we can get different SST data um, and then write filtering, write checks, uh, essentially figure out how to do the whole project in the cloud. Um, say on the cloud instances that you're using right now and use X-Array and Dask in order to piece it out across all of the computers, all of the nodes and run it a lot faster. Okay, um, project 10, Chlorophyll Fluorescence uh, QC. Mentors are Guy Castelao, uh, myself, and Kath Mitchell. Um, we want to extend the Quotide framework to um, be able to quality control Chlorophyll Fluorescence. Quotide is a machine learning framework that allows us to apply a number of tests um, one on top of the other to look at this data um, to see if um, the data should be um, flagged as good or bad. Um, and so each test is a class that operates independently. Um, and we also want to generalize these tests to evaluate single profiles and along a full track. This is to be used on, um, say, Argo floats, gliders, um, certainly BGC Argo and um, there are different gliders in the ocean with all of these sensors on for measuring fluorescence. Um, and there may, and there may be, you know, like a dozen, two dozen, um, lots of tests that are all put together to give a sense of is this data good or not in the end. Um, project 11 is a ship track segmentator. Um, Ujung and Emilio are the mentors for this one. Um, so we have a ship track, a ship that's leaving, going to do a survey of an area or do some sort of action. And we want to figure out how we can break these tracks into different sections and make them, um, and automatically segment them so that we know what events kind of happened along them. We can see an area where there's a transit and then so maybe they're not collecting data or we're not interested in data along those sections and then we have regular transects where they're zigzagging back and forth and then you can also see that they're doing some um, operations at some predefined points maybe there's a net trawl or they're dropping a CTD in the water or they're deploying something and so the ship has come to a stop or is moving very slowly as opposed to the speed they were moving before. Um, so how can we break these sections up? Um, and we can look at sampling behavior patterns. We can try to compare data-driven versus real-based approaches. Um, the goal is to, one of the goals is to explore geopandas and moving pandas. And if you have your own data you want to bring, um, you're more than welcome to do so. And then last but not least, we have project 12, co-locators. Locators. It's a project from um, last year, Ocean Hack Week 2019. Our mentors for this project are Matthew Biddle, Michael Wengren, um, and they're expanding their project from last year where they have, um, there's a Jupyter notebook that can query a number of ERDAP data servers and then return data sets. And so what they want to do this year is to continue to enhance the querying capability, the user interface and data analysis abilities, um, maybe um, expand the user interface um, different ways, add some more plotting abilities, um, Maybe this could be done in conjunctions with project three and six. Um, the project six being the metadata one, so maybe we can figure out how to add searching capability over um, non ERDAP servers to co locators or add the plotting capability 
um, from project three to project 12, who knows? And we have some final notes. Uh, relax, have fun. I need to relax and slow down talking. Um, the whole point is for you to learn and to grow and enjoy yourself. So relax. Again, don't feel like you need to spend 20 or 40 hours on this project. We certainly don't expect any of you to do that. Um, it'd be nice if you looked at and worked on your projects outside of the Ocean Hack Week time, but you don't have to. We certainly don't expect that you will. Um, Look at all the projects, choose a group that interests you by the start of tutorials on Wednesday. Um, and by choose a group, choose one group. Um, it's probably gonna be very hard for you to be bouncing around two or three groups. Um, and so it's probably best if you work on one project and you can decide on that by the start of tutorials on Wednesday. Check in with your mentor and group each day so check in before the next day start. Um, and if you're working on your own project, you don't have a mentor, um, check in with me and I will be here to keep you honest, make sure that everything is going okay. Uh, use the help desk channels. Um, if you want to simply directly message an instructor for privacy, um, you don't wanna broadcast your question to the whole Ocean Hack Week group, that's fine. Just send us whatever questions you have and we'll try to make it work. Um, at the end of the week, each team will have roughly five minutes to present and take questions at the end of the week. So let's try to limit this to say three slides, um, maybe a short demo of the project, um, or you, know, you don't have to make slides. If you have a Jupyter notebook that you just wanna show, then just show us the notebook or show us a web page or whatever it is that you're doing. You can run the machine locally, run the code locally on your machine if that's what your group wants to do. And again, don't burn out feeling you need to finish your project. Um, and that's it. We are done a little early. Let me check the different channels. Um, there's a question about working on multiple projects. Um, yeah, everybody's project will be available on the Ocean Hack Week GitHub. Um, so we have the Ocean Hack Week GitHub organization and then everybody should be um, essentially working on a fork or the main repository should be on the Ocean Hack Week GitHub if it's not being branched off from a active open source project. Um, and I think for projects uh, one, two, three, um, maybe even four, um, those are all, and project 12, those are all open source projects that are currently going um, at some manner. So there should be a fork that's brought into the Ocean Hack Week organization, and then people can work on that. And then everybody can look at the code and look at what, um, look at the code afterwards, continue to work on it, do whatever you want with it. Um, let's check tutorials. Um, there don't seem to be other questions in the general chats. Um, so on that note, I'm going to end this five minutes early and all of you can go jump in. Uh, the first project meeting is whenever you want it to be, Shell, because you are the mentor. So you can, I figured there are, um, I tried to end this early, so there's at least five minutes for people to try to talk to each other or ask questions. Um, you can certainly ask questions um, right after this project. I think all of the instructors will be around at least for another five or 10 minutes afterwards. Um, but otherwise, um, go ahead and just start pinging people in the project channels. Uh, I am a mentor or co-mentor on five, maybe six of these projects, and I will be available roughly as much as I can. So 
don't feel bad about sending me a message on Slack at any time of the day or night, wherever it is, where you are. Um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and that's it. Thank you, everybody, for coming and paying attention. Turn it back over to Wusheng. Thank you, Joseph. That was great. So um, I think we're sort of officially ending today. Um, Emilio and Nick, do you have anything you want to say before kind of we close and let everyone just work? work? Kind of look at the project and chat on Slack. Nothing except thanks to everyone. Uh, Joseph, you did a great job. Thanks to all the presenters. And uh, it's been exciting to see that pretty much everyone has stuck around. Um, uh, and most of you were using, or at least open the hub. So that if you had any problems whatsoever, um, you can find this via Slack and we'll get to it eventually um, sooner rather than later. So see you tomorrow. <laughs>